Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know this is a video after a couple of months of break on my channel. I uh, was busy with my own DM exams, but uh, I'll uh, try to help you in your journey of NEET, NEET PG and ICT and so forth. So this video is about NEET PG 2024. We know the exam is coming the first week of March, 3rd of March. So I would like to share exact strategy that I would have followed in the coming two months that I have, okay, the month of January and the month of February. I'll try to uh, uh, give you such a strategy, right? So uh, as, as you can see, uh, in this video, I'm going to cover and I'm going to let you know what your goal should be in the coming two months and then a month wise plan for these two months. And then at the end, I'll, I'll try to answer some of the doubts that you may have in your mind at the moment, right? So first, if you can, um, you must know your goal, right? See, every student is different. Somebody's goal right now, depending on his, his or her preparation, it may be that I want to get top 100 rank, right? Somebody may say, um, my target is 1,000 to 2,000 and so forth. Somebody may say, I just want a seat, a PG seat. It doesn't matter. It could even be a non-clinical seat. So your goal has is an individual goal. Your target is an individual target. And I respect everyone's goal, right? That's important to understand, right? So you know what you're targeting. And depending on that, your intensity of preparation should be, you know, higher as per your target. Now, irrespective of that, there are only two months left. So most of you should be preparing rigorously for this exam, right? So, the first thing I want to focus is this. You need to identify weak areas. Why? Because this exam is not about a few subjects. It's about all 19 subjects. And at the minimum, you should be comfortable with all the major subjects because the major subjects will form the chunk, the major chunk of the, of the, of the question paper. So you need to be very comfortable with all the major subjects, be it medicine or surgery or obstetrics or pathology or pharmacology. You should be comfortable. You should not be weak in these subjects. Then you should be strong even in most of the weak subjects. The, the reason I'm highlighting is that it's not mandatory that you master all the weak subjects. It's okay to have one or two weak minor subjects. You know, I, at my point of time, I was weak in orthopedics. I was weak in probably anesthesia as well. So the point I want to make is that it's okay to be weak in a couple or maybe two to three weak, the minor subjects. Those subjects, you can just cover the previous questions and hope that with that knowledge, with that information, you're able to get at least 50% of the questions from those couple of weak subjects, right? Okay, but you should try to score 70 to 80% of almost all subjects. Definitely in the major subjects, your target should be to reach the 70 to 80% goal of all 19 subjects, right? Okay, so the reason I'm highlighting is this. Uh, the reason is that say, for example, your orthopedics is weak. I don't want you to spend seven days in understanding orthopedics. If your psychiatry is weak, I don't want you to spend five days in reading psychiatry and trying to understand it. Forget it. The point is that if you have a couple of weak areas, it's okay to read just the previous year questions and hope that with that knowledge, you solve a few questions out of the total number of questions from that subject. Okay. The next thing is I want you to have a realistic schedule in the, in the coming two months. Okay, the first thing I would do for myself is that in the coming 30 days, the month of January, I will master the major subjects. What that means is that I will cover subjects like medicine, subjects like surgery, pathology. I'll be highlighting the next slide here. So these subjects I'll be giving five days each. They're six in number. The subjects like pathology, pharmacology, preventive and social medicine, medicine, and surgery and obstetrics, gynecology. I'll be giving at least five days to each subject so that I, I master these six subjects in the coming 30 days, which means at the end of 30 days, I should be comfortable with these six subjects because they will form the biggest portion of your question paper. So you complete all the major subjects in the next 30 days. And this is what I would have done if I was preparing in the exam. 
Now, what do I read in these major subjects? Remember, you cannot read everything, every bit of these major subjects. No, it's not possible. You need to identify the high yield areas, the high yield chapters and the high yield topics in those chapters. And for that, your previous year questions are the best guide. They will let you know what are the high yield areas, right? Okay. And you revise whatever you've read, whatever resource you've read. You know, you don't need to change the resource. If you've read it from, say, Marrow, uh, whatever, uh, or Prep Ladder stuff, or your own notes, your coaching notes, whatever you've read in, in that particular subject, revise it because you just got five days for a major subject, right? So revise that material quickly and you practice the MCQs rigorously. It's not about reading, it's about utilizing your information and solving MCQs because ultimately what you have to do is to find the answer out of the four options that you have in front of you. Okay, and remember to cover at least five to seven year, five year, five or seven year MCQs for each of these major subjects, right? I think this should be a fair task, a doable task for the next one month. Just focus on these six subjects. Forget that you're appearing for 19 different subjects. Just focus on these six subjects. Complete these six subjects in 30 days. I know it's not easy. It's difficult, but it's manageable because in each major subject, you're covering high yield areas. Okay? Now, and as I mentioned, previous year questions are your best guide. They help you identify the high yield topics, which are more likely to... To, to repeat in the exam, right? Then the, in the two weeks of February, what you need to do or what I would have done is I would cover the minor subjects, right? So things like biochemistry, things like microbiology, ophthalmology, ENT, PSM, forensic, etc. I'll give one to two days each subject. For example, I'll give two days to ophthal or two days to ENT or maybe one day to psychiatry, one day to forensic medicine and so forth. Things like that, okay? So which means by mid-February, by about 15 February, should be doing one complete revision from from first first Jan to 15 Feb one full revision of all 19 subjects that's mandatory right and I want to focus on this slide here see uh, as you're reading these 19 subjects as you're reading your major and minor subjects I want you to create either a folder in your phone in your gallery or I want you to prepare a separate notebook where you note high yield points they can be one-liners they can be an important table an important figure just store it at one place things that are like either volatile you you tend to forget these points or very important very repeatedly asked questions just store them at one place maybe a, a 100 to 200 page notebook or maybe a folder in your phone that you can revise right and then what do you do in the last 15 days or whatever, 14, 13 days, which you get in the February, right? What I would do is I will do full three hour practice, full question paper practice, full three hour concentrated, focused revision of an entire one paper, right? So do previous year papers, do five year, seven year papers, one paper each day and, and stay focused for full three hours. Start from question one, go to the question and just learn to focus for three, three long hours, right? Because it becomes difficult in exam because if you are trained to focus for just 50 minutes and take 10 minutes of rest, that's not the case in exam. You need to be oriented for full three hours, right? Then what you need to do in these in, in, at, at this point of time is you're revising previous year questions, you're reading their, their 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 answers, and you're trying to cover the areas that are that are surrounding these questions, right? Which means in these couple of weeks of the end of February, you'll again go through all the 19 subjects covering the questions that have appeared in the exam and reading the things in their in their surroundings, right? So that should mean that in this last bit of time that you have, you'll be roughly covering important areas of all the 19 subjects. Because these question papers, previous questions, GTEs or whatever uh, the resource that you have will have questions of all 19 subjects that have appeared in the last seven years. And I tell you, they are the most important things that need to be revised at the end, right? Okay, then the last couple of days that you will have, 24, 48 hours before the exam, that is where you need to get that folder out of your phone or th that notebook that you're prepared and revise those pearls, revise those one-liners, revise those tables, revise those concept maps and so forth, right? So that is how I would plan my my preparation of the two months prior to need PG if I was there to appear in this exam, right? Then some doubts that you might have and that I want to address in the, at the end of this video is, number one, see, it's quite natural that 
you know, uh, as you're preparing, you feel little underconfident, that you're not able to remember lots of things. You're not able to recall a question when a friend asks you that question. It's okay. It happens with everyone, right? These are 19 huge subjects, 19 huge subjects. And we just, we just need that amount of preparation that you can identify the correct answer out of the four options. That's all you need to do. You don't need to say, understand everything about apoptosis or everything about necrosis or everything in pathology of heart or everything in the medicine of, re of the kidney. You don't need to understand everything. You just have to have enough information in your mind that you pick the right option out of those four or at least rule out two wrong options and then you can have that 50% probability. That's all you need. Okay. Remember, you don't need to master everything, right? The second is confidence. Like, look, remember, we're all the same. Most of the medical students, 95, 99% of us, we have the same IQs. I repeatedly say this on my videos. We have the same IQs. We've have, we have seen the same resources, the same videos, the same question, the same previous question material is there available for everyone, right? We've had the same resources. We roughly have the same IQs. We've roughly read almost equally, right? Almost everybody gives, you know, heart and soul to this preparation. So please be confident. You're not fighting a computer. You're not fighting artificial intelligence. You're just competing with your colleagues who are as good or as bad as you. So you got every single chance that your colleague has, right? So be confident. It is difficult, but it's manageable and it's equally difficult or equally easy for everyone around you, right? So I wish you luck for your exam. And I would um, I would encourage if you have any further questions, you type them in the, in the comment section. I'll try to, uh, you know, answer in the subsequent videos. Thanks for being there.